Welcome back to the second and final episode of this ThinkPad P71 painting project. In the last episode, we tore everything down, we sanded, we painted, we spent a whole ton of time making a bunch of graphics, we printed them on the painted surfaces, and now we can finally put everything back together. Starting with the palm top, we're putting back in the fingerprint reader, as well as the little calibrating lens for the display. And here you can see the contrast with the touchpad with the gloss feels very nice. Since it would be kind of nice to see when the laptop is turned on, I did mask off a little triangle for the power button LED, as I wasn't sure if it was gonna shine through all the paint layers, which it wouldn't, so I'm glad I did this. When I painted my first laptop, I accidentally left the lens on when I was painting, so I did not forget this time I am trying to learn from my mistakes. Because of that mistake, my other laptop has a full-time privacy shade, and I'm kind of okay with that. Now I'm just going to prepare the bottom panel for the motherboard installation. Being the biggest and baddest ThinkPad out there, this is a 17 inch laptop, which means that this motherboard is an absolute behemoth. It is gigantic, it is heavy, it weighs probably two to two and a half pounds. It's got tons of copper and steel all over it. It is very cool. I'm sure you guys forgot by now, but in the first episode, I did relay that this laptop had audio issues and I went through every troubleshooting steps to try and make it work, but I believe this is a hardware fault at the motherboard level. So instead of trying to repair the motherboard, I figured I would try a workaround where I take this, which is an external sound card, and try to make it internal. That's one of the benefits of having a gigantic laptop with a ton of room you can do things like this or at least attempt to which is what I was going to do. Taking off the case here you can see I got five wires that are going to a USB-C port but before that I did a ton of work off camera. I even reached out to Realtek because I couldn't find a pinout for this audio chip and I did verify that it was getting power but no sound output even though it, it wasn't like the chip wasn't getting power. So I figured for 10 bucks, I'll give it a shot. I am a absolute noob when it comes to board repair, but I have done a few things with some success. So I figured I'll give it a shot and if it doesn't work, I'll carry on with my external internal sound card. Soldering chips with 50 plus pins is not really my idea of a good time. However, it is very challenging and Getting things off of there is pretty easy, but putting them on and making sure that everything is lined up and in the right orientation, that's a bit more difficult. I am acquiring more tools over time to be able to do board repair in a better fashion. However, I don't have a microscope. I do have a magnifying glass and that was good enough to at least see if all the pins were lined up and I actually did it correctly even though it was a bit challenging trying to get the chip to stay in the right spot while I was blasting it with hot air. I originally didn't want to go this route because I'm used to working on laptops that are like $100 or $200 but this is like a $700 laptop and yeah if I mess that up not gonna be happy. Unfortunately my repair didn't work all the pins were lined up everything looked good it just had the same issue so I don't even know if the original chip wasn't working so screw it I'm moving on to plan B my workaround and here's what I got so I can't plug the speaker directly into the motherboard anymore so I made my own wires that go to this port which I added I didn't use the original port because it has to be switched to go from headphones to the internal speakers I also got power from that USB port under the express card and it works it's just not as loud as the the original chip through the speakers so I messed around with a ton of these little amplifier boards and it did make it a lot louder but it also introduced a bunch of distortion and harmonics and it didn't sound good so because I'm using one of those USB ports for power, I added two more by utilizing the express card port, which is usually not used for anything. Here's a shot of the underside where you can see all the wires going to my switch jack, going up through to the sound card and also out to the speakers. 
Thankfully, this is a giant laptop with a bunch of extra room that probably you wouldn't have in a smaller laptop. So I was able to make this work with quite a bit of modifications to the bottom panel, but I got everything to fit and it does work pretty well. Thankfully, there's a big cavity where the plugs for the keyboard go in and this is a perfect spot for the sound card. This sound card is actually much better than the one that came on the laptop motherboard. It will do 24-bit audio at 190 2 kilohertz which the original chip would definitely not do. Because I have two of these laptops I was able to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the volume levels and I honestly don't really listen to laptop speakers because if I want to listen to something I'll use headphones or put it through an amp with better sound setup but it does work it just maybe hits 60 to 70 percent of the volume that the original chip did with the speaker setup and everything so i'm totally okay with that because the sound output is much better and is higher quality so if you have a laptop with a broken sound chip this might be a viable solution for you just getting a small external sound card and embedding it inside after dumping way too much time trying to get this audio to be as best as I possibly could. I tried changing the chip. I tried adding a new chip but then it wasn't loud enough so I added some amplifiers and then they increased all this distortion so then I went back through all my wiring, added shielded cables and all that. I was finally happy to be completely done with that part of this build and now I can just continue on with the reassembly. At this point the laptop turns on, the audio works, everything works and I figured I was almost done and then I got the bright idea of hey you know what this keyboard is just very black and the rest of the laptop is very light colored so what if I just customize the keyboard? You might be thinking to yourself, well, you've already done the rest of the laptop and you know the procedure for doing it can't be that much more difficult, but I assure you it is. And the reason comes down to legend placement or graphic placement. And like, for instance, on the top panel of the entire laptop, there's only three groups of graphics that need to be adjusted and moved around. This has over 108 different places where graphics need to go and you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's on a grid and kind of is on a grid, except there's multiple sections of this grid that all need to be figured out, mapped out, and that is a trial and error process for the most part. For the keyboard, I decided to just print the entire board instead of painting and then printing on top. and. I thought this was going to be a good idea and I could do a graphic that is similar to the paint job. I knew it wasn't going to match exactly but I figured I could get it close and maybe the differences would be an aesthetic thing that actually looked pretty cool. I tried to save some time and go off a photo reference for the legend placement and it got me pretty close. There are some areas where it's definitely not close enough in my opinion so I'll show you that in a bit but here's basically the process laying down an entire white layer and then printing the color on top of it. I debated leaving the original legends and then just adding my own sub legends or different ones that had a different style to them which would look cool but I decided those ones were not good enough so I just remade all the legends in a different font and did all that. I was curious if the original legends were going to shine through the print however I did lay a very thick white layer on so I don't think that's going to happen which is fine. I am very happy with how the graphic turned out. I think it looks really cool. I am not super happy with the legend placement. It is decent it is okay but there's still quite a few issues especially with the f row key and the reason why is because all of these keys are almost a different size even though they look like they're the same they are slightly different for different columns and that was one of the reason why 
these legends like the control panel one right there i mean it's completely off the key going on to the base this is definitely the worst of the example right there and you can see how i was aligning this while printing over the top and i was using this because i had to redo this whole entire thing and it wasn't because the legend alignment wasn't perfect and I'll show you exactly why I needed to redo this. I was super happy with how the hex pattern came out. It's offset, it looks really cool. You'll notice on camera that it looks a little green though. I used all grays. This is monochromatic all grays in my print file. So this should be only shades of gray, but it looks green and that is unacceptable. This is just one example when you are moving too fast in a project and I have misalignment in my legends and also misalignment with my color. Although trying to get it to match a real world painted object is not really going to be possible. So what did I do? I repainted the whole thing with spray paint in the same way that I painted the rest of the laptop. So I knew that was going to match. And here you can see the shadow layer. I added a small drop shadow to give more contrast to the legends. And I also completely redid the entire layout. And I spent probably two or three hours making sure that all the legends were as aligned as I could possibly get them. Thankfully, this keyboard layout is for a lot of different ThinkPads. So if I ever want to do this again, I have a template which works very well. And even though this took a ton of work, I basically had to start back at square one on the keyboard portion. I am glad that I redid it because this came out so much better than the original one. All the legends are aligned as perfectly as I can make them. It looks so much better. The paint matches the rest of the laptop and it's just really cool. You can see the wires are now shielded on the external sound card, well, internal now sound card. And I wasn't wanting to leave a bunch of tape just because it can get kind of warm on the laptop and then the electrical tape gets sticky. So I'm just covering this with some heat shrink and that is a much safer and better fit for it. As you guys can see now, the paint match is perfect. This print came out really cool. I love all the graphics that I made for this. The placement, everything just fits very well. I'm super happy with how this turned out. There is one issue and that is when I added the clear coat, the paint started bubbling a tiny bit. I don't even know if you could see that on the mic key right there, but that was the only thing really wrong with this print and I maybe I just went too heavy on the clear coat. It is a matte clear, so it's not glossy or anything, but I think that it was too cold, too wet when I was painting. It was basically almost raining and I should have waited, but I did want to complete this project. So I just went with it. And after it dried fully, everything was good again. I just need to install the keyboard and then move on to one last little accessory. And that is when I was painting, I lost one of the screw covers for the display panel and not exactly sure how that happened. I think the tackiness of it just wasn't there and when I was painting just blasted it away. So instead of trying to repaint that area, I decided why don't I just cover it with some cool vinyl gold wrap. If you guys are a fan of my other projects, you'll know that I am a sucker for adding little gold accents to some of my projects, even though this is a camouflaged kind of military theme. I think just a little tinge of bling is not a bad contrast. And you might think it looks garish or it doesn't fit, but I think it works out perfectly. Here is a speaker test and my camera mic is not gonna pick it up very well, but I'm just showing you that I did repair it, it does work. With the laptop fully assembled, the keyboard is in, the audio is sounding excellent. The only thing I have left to do on this project is show it off to you guys. If you've been here since the beginning, I appreciate you so much for spending your time and watching me go through the arduous task of putting all this together. Many weeks, months went into the preparation, the painting, the printing, the everything. So 
I appreciate you guys for watching and please enjoy. And because I couldn't stop there, I designed and printed my own laptop riser, which allows the top of the screen to be more level with my secondary monitor. And it also allows you to show off the laptop in a much better way. So this was a really cool addition. And I have some carbon rods that connect the two side pieces and then the laptop just sits directly on top of it. a ton of new projects coming down the pipeline some are small some are super huge and i hope you guys are curious to see what i come up with next thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one